Yo, good morning. Happy smiles are out, guys. Teeth, let's see how many we can count. This morning, it's a good one. The sun's out, it's midweek, go on. Sorry, uh, it's midweek, we're out in the sun. And we're, just, we're just grabbing the coffee, we're just doing the essentials. I tell you, some parts of the routine sometimes have to remain the same. Even if cost is not a popular opinion, most people probably a popular opinion, it is a bit rubbish coffee. It's not actually where you go for a good quality coffee. Sorry, Costa. It's the truth. But what you do go for is a quick bit of flipping caffeine in the system. So what I've done, I'm actually taking this off to just show you my t-shirt. So let me just um let me just keep this shot running. So this is a doors t-shirt today. I've got the joggers and I've got these. You know most people will look at me and they'll probably think, this guy looks like he's not serious. I really like that <laughs> about the fact that people will look at you and just like the ironic thing about being a clothing seller and choosing to wear things that you're just comfortable in says a lot about the clothing itself. Not that like it's not desirable, but like it's it's not all about the brand, it's just about comfort. So he says this wearing a Timberland, Adidas, Birkenstocks and a vintage band tee, so and some designer glasses. So I'm actually a walking contradiction. You shouldn't listen to anything I say. But what I will say is today is a good one. So I got a nice exciting meeting to start things off in an hour or so, gonna go home and edit. Then um, I'm gonna hit the gym quickly, get it in because I didn't. I had a day off yesterday. Shock! I was just like, not a day off the gym. But I was just like, I went for a few hour walk instead. Just thought I'm gonna just change, change what I'm doing a bit, not just keep going to thingy. Um, and then, and then, and then, and then, we're gonna go and try a different place out for some uh, charity shops because. Everybody keeps commenting and saying, you need to try some different places out. <laughs> you need to go some different places. So what I'm gonna do, I'll get in the car as well and get to make sure my coffee's off here. What I will do today is I'm gonna try some different places. I think I'm gonna try, um, yeah, this place near me called Syston. Uh, if you know it, you probably don't, but that's the one I'm gonna try. I'm gonna do that one, Syston, and then after that, we're gonna do two lives on Tilt. So we're gonna keep things moving in the right direction. So guys, I will see you on the next shot. Right, I tell you what, we are just like shot two in the day. And I think it's like half as well. Just been to the gym, had a good meeting that obviously we can't talk about yet. Um, but you know what? I wanted to actually use this video a little bit in a different tone to yesterday. Obviously each day I'm like, I'm, I'm basically sharing thoughts I'm having about things I feel and then I reflect on it and I see how I feel after I say it. So it's not to say, oh, what I say, I'm gonna contradict, but I'm like, you know what? Fair play to those that work hard. And I'm, and I'm saying that to anybody in general, fair play to those that actually work flipping hard, you know? Like there's some people that I'm seeing that are just have, the work ethic is what it's all about. And I had a conversation with a friend um, yesterday about, you know, kind of returning to like what people try and copy or what people try and be a part of and stuff. But the main thing you want to be, or the main thing you want to replicate of somebody is you want to replicate their work ethic, you really want to replicate, like, if you can, understanding how somebody works the way they do. You know, like, in a sense where, in a competition, I mean, in, a, in the most competitive status of your mind or place you could be, is to say, you know, I remember being in the place where I was like, if someone's doing that, I'm going to do it 10 times better, and I'm going to do it with more finesse. I'm going to make sure I do that. And that's what I did. Now I'm in a bit of a different space where, like, I've gone through that and realised that that's not what my driving force is. I like that's not where my work work ethic will continue to build. Like my work ethic is probably built up off more what I'm realizing now, finding an inner purpose and value that I can give to more than just myself. And uh, yeah, in these new routes that we're taking and some other secret ones that I can't tell you about, because guess what? There are some still secret ones. Spend doesn't keep spilling all the beans. There are some other bits. But anyway, I'm getting a coffee before we head to ah, thank you. Before we head to uh, Sison for the car boot mission. Okay, I'm just out of getting the coffee and it feels again like a moment just to capture. I'll go around this way, a bit of a long winded way to the van. But anyway, um, I was just waiting for the coffee and picking it up and I was just like looking at TikTok. Now, one thing, what's going on, bro? Hang on. What are you saying, my man? You all right? Yeah, I, I need catch to come. Soon. Yeah, we'll catch up soon, bro. See, See you in a bit, man. Oh, sick. Right, so I had to Aiden and met him at uh, the rotating wardrobe just then. No, yeah, that guy's hard. Um, what I was going to say is, uh, brr, brr, brr. yeah, I don't want to make these videos all about talking about um, the kind of like RPM and like what TikTok makes. Because I know that a lot of you will be like, 
yeah, just tell us, Ben. Uh, it was actually thanks to my dad, who's kind of like, again, I keep telling him about my dad and his like Buddhist mindset. And he's just like, you just got to be a little bit more conserved with everything you share. And I'm like, yeah, there's probably some method and logic to that. So it's not about like keeping things hidden because I like to be authentic, but I guess it's not that relevant for you guys to know how much I make from things like that. Although it is like a, a nosy curiosity. But what I would say is that the big thing that I was focusing on with TikTok was improving the RPM health after I got absolutely smashed down. Like from when I did the video the other day, oh my God, my parking's awful. When I did the video the other day, uh, like the bail videos that kind of like took my RPM, which is basically of the qualified views you get, you make X pennies per thousand views that qualified. Also, I've got these pink socks on, don't judge. Um, and as a result, like it went down to like 6p per thousand. So basically every video didn't qualify. Now, hang on, since, um, <coughs> sorry, since doing like, since sort of stopping that and monitoring it, what I realized is that the RPM just went up massively. So it went from 6p, 6p to 62p. So I did a video yesterday, and it's not loads, but like a little video of just going to a charity shop just generated like 30 quid. So it's kind of like, yeah, nice. Thank you, TikTok. Next up, YouTube. Uh, no, it's, that's not the actual reason we do it. I'm just uh, sharing it with you. Here we go, capturing the shot now. Hopefully, I'm fingers crossed gonna get some shots inside on here. But I'll be honest with you guys, at the moment, it's a little bit more beneficial to use the, the time in the tick, uh, time in the charity shops to make the TikTok uh, and then talk about like the aftermath afterwards that's how i think youtube's gonna kind of play out like don't get me wrong i do want to do both but what i'm gonna find difficult is just executing both so yeah we'll see if i i'm hopefully maybe one of them i'll just do like a video inside for the expert celebration cake to be honest i feel like i need a celebration to have a cake I, I, I woke up, give me a cake. <laughs> Guys, I'm actually coming here to just report something hilarious that happened in the first, so the first charity shop I went into, right? Uh, <laughs> and I, I caught some of it on film. I think it's gonna look quite funny when I watch it back. I went into this charity shop and a woman just came over and barged me out of the way, no word of a lie, barged me out of the way to look at the t-shirts. And I said, are you okay, my love? And she went, yes, are you? And I was just like, yeah. I just, I was, and I literally said, I was like, are we friends? Like, because I was just thinking I needed to like normalize the situation because whatever this human interaction was was not like a normal human interaction at all. So, literally, I sort of said, <laughs> and she was just like, it is a charity shop. And I was just like, yeah. What's that got to do? It's called common courtesy, isn't it? But uh, either way, we can only control how we react to things. So, let that woman do her thing. We keep it moving and grooving. Next charity shop, I'm going to film for, um, I'm going to film as normal. So, on, on here yeah i tell you what i think something what i'm realizing and post this video what i'm realizing with uh like the charity shops is obviously something something that we have to remember with it as well is that oh there's a charity shop also another thing to remember with it is that like, people that are in charity shops there's like a certain age to it like i i must come across like i'm there to the spice and resell and i know that's what i've done for the longest but it's not like the total intention of it I'm still just processing this woman. I wish I could have had like a GoPro on, like, and just, and it could have just been seen. Like, it was clearly, obviously, like some, some weird response to to me being in that place at that time. Um, so yeah, we we firms it. We still done four videos, and now I've got brain tumor battle charity shop just there, and then I got one more down the road. So I'm really hoping that we get some good content. To be honest with you, there's another one where I had a, a lovely interaction with a woman in one afterwards because she was selling a wooden bag, and I've never seen a wooden bag with like. This face, it looked like something from Crash Bandicoot. It looked like the Uka Uka Man. Uh, so I'm gonna do this one in here. And as soon as I find like a nice member of staff, not that no member of staff have been nice, some of them just had some very, very funny energy. So yeah, the obby. Oi, the weather's just decided to get flipping nice, bro. Um, so we are just literally, we're just literally out of uh, the charity shops. As you can see, didn't manage to get any shots inside. Uh, for, for YouTube, but you can watch them all on the TT. I do actually think that these are the moments where it'd be nice to have a little bit of a, a, a GoPro or something like that instance hasn't triggered me, but it's definitely challenged me to be, oh God, all the shit from the last couple two carbon. I think what I might go back is I've got to go to work now, so I might go back to work and just absolutely 
let you join me on getting all this out. I'm not sure if I'm gonna do a live today. Uh, but yeah, why am I just starting to drive while I'm on the phone? I don't do that. Um, yeah, just gonna go back to work. Oh shit. I'm not, I've not got my work keys. I'm going home to get my keys to go to work. Okay, this, this shot's gonna look a bit strange, right? But I'm just sat out here. It looks like I'm really happy with the 20 bags I've just brought out. But I've just brought out all these ones that we sold on till. And I wanted to just come here about like, I guess like the how whole the process is. Cause like, we've just been using Royal Mail for so long. A lot of them can actually go to Royal Mail as well, based on different price with set weights. But Parcel Force bring them up like this. I'm looking at this system thinking, how are we gonna make this like the smoother, simpler system? We've actually got this guy who's coming for a test, uh, a trial shift on Friday, who's gonna be the person responsible for this. Cause obviously, Spen's needed the sit down after moving 20 bags. I think about, uh, I don't know, a few hundred kilos, I'm not sure. Uh, yeah, probably a few hundred kilos, maybe, maybe more actually. But um, yeah, it's good, it's good. Just coming out here, just enjoying the sun for a minute. But I thought I'd just get a shot of this for some reason. What I'm gonna do next is I'm gonna open the boot and I'm gonna show you how much of a shithole the van is because I don't keep it clean at all. Just for total, total transparency, this is my van, right? And this is the stuff. Oh, it's them lot there. I was like, who's up there? And it's them people that are moving. I thought they were moving somewhere. This is all my stuff. So what I'm gonna do now is basically get it all out and actually see what it is. I have no idea what half of this stuff is. So yeah, I'm gonna get this out of the van and then I'll just show you something. I'll be totally honest with you guys. I'm pretty sure, yeah, this is just own clothes that I've got rubbish down. So there's actually so many piles. Plus there's a big flipping elephant painting in here. Let's just get a big bag and let's just put all of this in it. That's the best thing I do. So when I ever like think, oh, I've got too much stuff, what I do is just get a big bag and I put it all in and then I go, there we go. So, you know, I do it at home as well, where I look through my wardrobe and I go, I don't have any attachment to anything other than like a very few items that mean something to me. Other than that, they get flipping shipped off and sold. Uh, but this is all the car boot stuff anyway, so I'm just gonna put it in the bag. Okay, so the van is empty. Well, the van is like 94.5% empty. That, that is, oh, that is stuff to resell, stuff that I've got from the car boots, charity shops, anything I've collected, plus anything that's been collected in the back of the van. And then this is my own washing, because yes, I bring it here to do, because we've got a laundry. <coughs> Excuse me. And this is rubbish, which I don't want to be washed or to resell. That's going to go in the bin. This going to go down there. My other socks there, and this the other bag. So let's keep it moving. And I think the time is actually like, li hang on, let me just check. I'm pretty sure it's about five to three. And yeah, it's five to three. I'm very tempted to just go, shall I just do 45 minutes until? Because this is the thing about like when you can, whenever you find pockets of time, you might have people that will go, the, the whole art of it is to work really hard and then like balance it by not doing as much. But you know when you find yourself with time, like for me now, I'm like, I've got the next maybe two, two and a half hours that aren't urgent. I don't need to be anywhere until a set time after two and a half hours. So other than that, it's like, do I make content? Do I do live? And that's where like the time, what I will say is when you don't have like a plan or a routine and you go, I just do whatever. I find myself in these spots all the time where it's like, okay, I've got certain admin stuff I could do with like making progress on. I've got certain points of the other roles I could do. I could make content or I could go on a live stream. Live stream is always the easiest option because it's just log in, start generating some turnover from buying, like people buying, and then keep it going with that. Whereas with content, it's like creating an idea, embellishing it, building it, posting it, executing it. And then with the admin stuff, it's just being in a state of mind to go, I'm sitting down because I want to do this. Uh, so yeah, I'm not sure where I'm decided yet, so we'll find out in a moment. Oh, if anybody's curious for a little stock update, like how's everything going? These are all sold. These are all to be sold, to be sold from the bundles. And this, you see that big pile we got? This is all we've got left. So I've got loads of other bags that are gonna happen, uh, but I've got a small amount left. And this is the thing I will say about selling at wholesale. Did not realize I zoomed in then, but the thing is about selling at wholesale, right? Is that when you do it, if the price is good, and obviously the price that I've set is like, it's very competitive. Uh, so much so that it's very, very, I know it can look very affordable. And also there's a side where it can look too cheap, but it doesn't look too cheap, it's it's just what it is. But as a result of it, selling it in that capacity, we um, 
Oh, Professor Snape's still there, scaring the shit out of me. In terms of this perspective, what happens is you think... So I normally get this, this stock that I've got. I normally get a percentage of the similar size. And what I'll do is I'll go through it all and we'll make our own little bundles of three items or we'll make individual items. So essentially, say a bale up there that has anywhere between... Let's just say it's got anywhere between 50 and 75 items per bale. It might be somewhere a bit lower than that or it might be a bit higher than that. It depends if it's t-shirts and stuff. Say from that 50 to 75 items from one bale, right? That could be like 15 bundles or it could be 10 bundles and like 20 items individually. And, and that's, I guess, what it, like, it really is at, is when we're selling them in the big bundles, it looks great on paper, it looks great in the reality of up there, but it's, I forgot what I've come down for. <laughs> what had I come down for? I remembered what I came down for. I came down for the green trolley, which I've actually not been able to find, um, which is very strange because I've got two of them and I can't find either of them. But yeah, this is just these are just the piles at the minute. Some of the last ones that we've got left. Please empty filter each. I think, ah, new ladies not working. Yes, we still haven't got them working. We'll get the cycle in a way. I tell you what though, doing the bundles just means we don't have to actually wash the items. So that's always nice. The, the washing items is a good preference for people who want small amounts at starter packs. That's a nice one. What's that? Boss Orange. That's hard. I might do these now. Oh, you know, as soon as I see items like this, let me be honest with you. As soon as I start looking through the rails like this, I'm like looking and thinking, there's 15 items plus two, three. There's 17 items. That's easy. I can put that on the live stream and we can just sell them. And if they go for a fiver, then it's like 100 quid. That's how my mind works straight away. But what I wanted to say about the wholesaling is I'm going to have to go up there anyway. So we'll just continue the march up and you can just join me for this. But the thing is about uh, wholesale, right? The actual situation with it is, is that yes, you're selling items really quick and it's great to sell items very quick. But when you don't have to rely on a volume as much when you sell individually, being a wholesaler requires volume continuously. Like there's certain people who've bought lots, but there's so many people who feel like they haven't even had a chance to get one yet. And it's kind of like, whoa. So still where I'm sitting on this at the moment, I'm still looking for the trolley, by the way. Let me just turn around so you can see my eyes, because this is how I'm looking for it. It's the green trolleys with the wheels. So, um, just was taken back by Snape there. Maybe there's one in here. Oh, no. Oh, it's got shit in it. Um, I just had an idea then. I don't know why this idea has come to me, but I was just like, I wonder if I can integrate Professor Snape with the football. Um... And I don't know why, but this is how like the creative mind will go. So I'll be here and I'll be like, that my mindset was thinking this, right? Oh, Professor Snape, I feel like he could get more views on TikTok. Saw the ball and I was like, oh yeah, I did that video, they got 700K. And when I did, did a poor attempt of a kick up, was it Marge? Was it the POV? Who knows? But we just keep making content and trying different things. But, oh no. Hang on. Can I take these out? I'm just going to take them out anyway. Don't tell Marge. Don't tell Marge, you know. I think these are just ones that just brought up for the bundles. Hang on. So these are like, yeah, men's jackets and coats unbranded. Now, that's another thing. So people think, like, one thing I'll say is the price on our wholesale isn't too good to be true, but it's because you're not just getting branded. That's as simple as it is. If you just got branded, I would probably be unable to compete with the prices that you get on the, on the I'm going to say on the street. But the prices you get on road uh, for this sort of stuff. Like, oh, for fuck's sake. Hang on. This is what I mean. It's like just constantly fucking moving trolleys through bloody rails. Um, <coughs> I feel like I haven't executed my point yet. So please allow me the time to execute it. Uh, just after I like wiggle this piece of nonsense right down. Oh my God. Flipping it. Where did I go with that then? We went for a flipping dance. Um, my point, what even was it? I feel like I haven't executed the point about the wholesaling situation. And I haven't finished that one because I kept going on. But what I was saying is, as a result of being a wholesaler, we sell things really quick. But one other thing to consider, hang on, one other thing to consider is that we're finding ourselves in a situation where with the bundles where we've already gone through it, say, 
not to go through it, but like when we go through them to essentially make smaller bales. Because guess what? Not everybody wants to. Um, uh, fuck. Okay, nice. Um, not everybody wants to buy the big bales. They sometimes want to buy them where it's like five, six kilos. But as a result, and this is one of the things I was trying to get to Marge yesterday, is that when we are selling, like, when, if we just sold purely branded ones, we'd have to rely on selling the unbranded ones. Whereas selling a mixture is, in my eyes, realistic of keeping the expectation of being sustainable. If, like, like I said, we'll return back to it. Most suppliers that are official, le legitimate suppliers will always require you to take other things other than just branded. And what that means is you trust the quality of the branded, the authenticity of it. As a result, you get other bits. That's how it's always been. Uh, I know certain things have changed in the chain of things, but that's how it's been. So that's why I'm putting like the unbranded stuff within it. But we did sell a few yesterday. Two pound fifty a kilo. Don't get me wrong. <laughs> it's absolutely like cheap as chips. But again, I've monitored and looked at the industry. And I think that the only way to compete with any supplier when you're new to trying to get into it is you have to just undercut uh, completely, unfortunately. Um, but, you know, the bales that I sell on the live stream or the bales that I'm selling at the moment are completely different to what other people are selling because uh, they're just different brands that you get. It's not all the same sort of stuff. And, you know, you choose in the same way, in the same way the people choose the, um, the people choose the person they buy from, the sellers, the buyers to sell will always choose the person that they want to actually buy off, the stock they want to buy. Really bad articulated point then, so ignore me. The sun's in my eyes, can I blame that? Okay, so I'm gonna say this now. This isn't my intention to leave it like this. In fact, I should do a wash of this, but the washing machines are full. But this is what I've just wrote. So it's car boot, charity shop, stuff. This is normally videos I send to either Marge to pass on to the ladies, but this is my washing as well. If you put a smiley face, then it's just like a nice little smiley face. Uh, so I've had an idea of what I'm gonna do. Let me tell you. I know this video has been like, whoa. Like, I think Spen's just been non-stop filming the last like 20 minutes. But what I am uh, going to do is do that one in a minute. But what I was going to say is I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to make some TikTok content until about quarter to four. So it's like five past three now. And then I'm just going to do a power hour, four till five. I'm going to actually, I've just had an idea. Come with me on this one. See, this, it just all developed. You see, what I'm actually going to do is come through here and take this stuff that we'd said was going to take um, earlier on. Uh, yeah, whack it in there again, just transporting it in the easiest way possible. This doesn't really like damage them or anything, it just like just homes them, <laughs> homes them sort of nicely. Oops, excuse me. Um, but yeah, I'm gonna take these up, have them on the rail. I genuinely think I might just like sell these ones and leave it as is. Uh, Maybe do a couple bundles. This is the thing. There's genuinely like this process, right? Where you go, when the going gets tough, the tough gets going. I'm not sure what that means, but what I was trying to get to just then with my point that I didn't make is sometimes you can be just killing it on a live. Like I've done it sometimes where I'm like, the individual items, I'll be like, I've got 50 people in here. They're all going for good prices. But then you get to this point where one thing I was saying to one of my friends today is, there's an art in stopping when you're at your best rather than stopping when you're at your worst. And that kind of thing where it's like, if you stop when you're at your best, people will have a good representation of you or a good opinion of you with whatever, whatever the business is, whatever the perspective of that is. Whereas when you stop after you've stopped being good, I wonder if this one's real bro product. When you stop being like, when you stop the thing, when you're like actually rubbish at it, the next things you go on to do People will take that f almost failure or learn success, however you want to like picture it or say it, they will take that into account. So my point of this is, is like with the live streams, like doing a few hours, I could stay on for an extra hour, but that extra hour might like burn me down, make not as much money and it might plateau. Um, that was it really. <laughs> okay, so I've just had a bit of a strange idea to make a bit of content, but what I was going to get to with one of the points I was trying to make earlier on is when I captured that live thought of getting the football that might seem silly is what I'm doing with a lot of the content, whether it's YouTube through the thumbnails, through the content, through the watch time, through the retention, through the click through rate, whether it's TikTok through the uh, likes, through the RPM, through the engagement for how long, you know, the the, the, the thing I metric, the monitor, the, 
I have to beatbox when my lips get tongue tied. But the metric I try and monitor the most is the watch time because that's what makes the difference. The longer somebody watches something, the more the um, platform will push you. Um, and yeah, it's always about captivating. So what my point was, was getting to was the football video I did accrued a lot of views. The snake one got a few, but not really something to write home about. However, the fact that it's a cardboard cutout and one thing I think works is doing POV content. So sometimes you just have to actually be a bit of an idiot on the internet to get people's attention. Because sometimes if you go, this is what I've learned, people will go, next. But if you go, right, let's see if I can do it. Let's see if I can boot this in Snape's face and I'll tell you something. People go, yeah. So the, the outcome is still trying to be the intended same, but the starting point always has to be something completely different. Yeah, 101 lesson with Spencer about attention on social media. So I think the time is 3.41. I've just set up a live right now. This door, I hate this. Um, I know that Roy and Mel are gonna come at some point, but I've not got anything for them today. So I'm gonna have to just, uh, just wait for them to turn up at four o'clock, but I'm gonna do a live at 10 to. I'm literally gonna just do the items I said. And we'll just say, literally just thinking, literally, literally, just thinking I'll do what I've got. Because like I say, it's an inter, it's in like an interjected hour. I've just done a few TikToks, a good one about like how to spot fake items. I mean, I'm just really trying to plant the seeds and make content and see what sticks and just, just maintain it really. Keep doing what we're doing. But um, yeah, I like to just maintain um, all parts of it. Even if it seems like there's quite a scatty order, because you just don't know. There might be an item here that goes for like £25. Uh, I've got some nice bits as well. And um, yeah, it will just be a good system. Anyway, I need both my hands now. So goodbye. Okay, a quick hour done. I think actually it was just a bit shy of an hour, but we got 21 auctions done, which is fantastic. Um, obviously, I didn't look for my keys beforehand. Uh, I don't know if anybody saw that, but basically I have a feeling that I've lost my van keys um and i just need to think where i might have put them as i put things in stupid places but the live was good and we did just a quick hour just to kind of like you know home in on some bits this is probably like showing you more than i need to actually show you guys so i need to figure out where they've gone so i'm going now from work and you're probably thinking spencer on the last shot you didn't have your keys well i still haven't got them but guess what i've just seen where they are and when I show you where they are, you'll think, how on earth have I got this far in life? Like, genuinely, how have I actually got anywhere in life? Because I'm an idiot. And this is going to show that I'm an idiot. So I was like, okay, the door's locked there. I'm sure it won't be in the back. And I tried the back door. And uh, yeah, there they are. So one of the story is, don't be like Spencer, because he's a moron. I've locked down the bottom. I think this is going to be the last shot as well, guys. So honestly, it's been good. And I feel, I keep watching some of the videos back and going, I know it's just me walking around talking. I really do just want to capture moments where I have like a thought and I think it's really useful. But what will happen is as I start to explore different things, like for example, you know, if I was actually in a different country right now, the content would probably end up being like two hours long and I'd probably be like doing live streams all day because there would be so much content potential that I'd probably be just trying to grab all of it. Whereas when you live the same, when you live in the same sort of place, and even though you do different things, you're doing different things in the same place. It's sometimes like hard to vary that uh, thing that's constantly the same, if that makes sense. So it's quite a nice day now. Really nice and sunny. I'm just going to lock up. I'm going to get myself home, get doing some bits and bobs that I needed to do. Uh, yeah, because I've got, I've got plans, my dudes. I've got plans, I've got plans, I've got plans. And unfortunately for you, they're not plans that I want to film. Uh, for YouTube. So yeah, guys, I'm literally just going to head home and do all of that. But if there's ever at any point, any moment where you want to kind of like give me some sort of topic or some point to talk about, these videos might be the best one for you to say, Spen, what do you generally think of like this brand doing this? Spen, what do you actually think of flannels? What do you think of like Stussy Honestly or whatever it is? Like, if you put a comment, what my aim is to hopefully take some comments and start to like just explore them more with longer videos. As in like, most of the time I'm just running off of a thought I've had. And that's all fine, because you can kind of like, what I'm trying to capture with that is the sort of, totally honest, a lot of it being the scattiness of the brain and how like, when you run a business and you're doing multiple things, it's very hard to have a consistent agenda, because every day is not consistent. 
and most of the people that are working with business are not consistent either so uh, and that's not even a shot that's just like that's just an honest response to how things are so guys whatever you're up to with the rest of your day with whatever you're up to right now i hope you're smashing it i hope you're killing it i can take the sign down for the royal mail it was there honestly stay safe stay sustainable keep doing you lot uh, i really appreciate the whole journey of it and if there's ever a moment when the video starts to get really bad and you want to give me some tips drop a comment just you know use that feature and let me know so that i know but anyway without further ado i gotta go in a bizzle